This is going to be a practical lesson in value mixing specifically for grisaille painting. The sphere that is above me now is the project that this is going to be related to. So when I'm mixing up shadows and when I'm mixing up half tones, this is the image that I have in mind. Now I've specifically chosen and edited this image so that there's enough color information that we really get to experience what grisaille is all about, which is to say grisaille does not mean no color. What it actually means is a variety of temperatures from warm, rich umbers into cool gray halftones that are made using only black and white. Starting out with white, I've got a Williamsburg handmade oil color, flake white. This is what I use for 90% of my paintings. After that, we have raw umber, something that is neutral-ish and kind of a warm brown type of color. Finally, I've got ivory black from Michael Harding. This is not because I believe it's the best ivory black on the market, but simply because most ivory blacks are pretty similar. The objective that we're working towards today is to get six good color values with a relatively even variation in value between them. Now, looking again at the sphere above me, I want you to notice the occlusion shadow. So that's the darkest dark that is in underneath the form of the sphere. This is gonna be the first color value that we're gonna mix up. It would be easy perhaps to just take black and assume that that is gonna be the value that we're gonna use in that area. However, what I like to do is reserve just a little bit of space, even if I think that the color value I need to mix up is ultimately my true darkest dark, I like to make it something other than perfect pure black. This is so that when I'm actually in the process of painting the subject, I always have that option to kind of go one further step on the value scale down to create an accent that I might need room for. This then means I'm just gonna mix a little bit of raw umber into my black. Mind you, when I'm mixing this, pay attention to how I'm holding the palette knife, right? I've turned it over, I actually have the top of the trowel facing downward. So it's pressing into the surface and I'm swirling it around like this. Now this is gonna mix up whatever is in the center of this area, but out at the edges, of course, there's gonna be some runoff. So what I'm gonna do is actually scoop all of that together, bring it back to center, and then run it through again. I usually tend to do it several times just to make sure that I get a thorough mix all the way through. This next part is super important. After I've finished my color mixing, I'm gonna go ahead and actually take it off the palette for a moment and wipe away whatever excess. I'm then going to place that color value here at the top of the palette, which is quite close to my row of pigments. What I'm doing here is beginning an organizational process, which is to say, on your palette you want a mixing area and you want a mixture area. This ensures that once you've made all of your mixtures, you have a space to pull from your brush and mix in between them to make whatever subtle variations that you actually need. So this is a really practical solution, not only for mixing colors, but also for painting eventually. The next thing I'm going to do is actually mix up my lightest light. Now, this is not going to be the light for the specular highlight that you see on the sphere. This is going to be for the overall body of light in the central light area of the sphere. In order to drop that value down a little bit, I'm just gonna take a whisper of my raw umber, and maybe just a tiny bit of ivory black as well. What I'm looking to do here is really just take the edge off of the lightest light so that I can make something which is really, really bright, but still gives me room to make that bright specular highlight sit on top of the surface of it. Now, I think that I've got a pretty decent color value here. However, I want to test to make sure that it's gonna do the exact thing that I'm looking for it to do. Now, this is an important part and I want you to remember it. Whenever you're unsure of a color value or you want to test and see whether it's doing the thing that you want, it's best to test directly on the surface of the paint. So you can grab a little bit of white, which eventually will represent the value of that specular highlight and make a comparison in between the two. Let's look at the sphere and let's look at these two mixtures and see if they're actually having a relationship that is similar to the one we have in this image.
In fact, I think that I could just make this a tiny bit lighter. What I'm going to do is just grab that white and maybe just a little bit more and adjust it so that I get the lightest light that I'm actually looking for that will both leave room for the specular highlight on the value scale, but also be bright enough to produce a really nice, brilliant light effect. Following up from there, I'm going to get into the darker half tones. Looking at this one, I want to mix up one that is relatively neutral and just a little bit lighter. So again, I'm going to start with black. And I'm going to mix, let's say, almost 50% raw umber into that. Now remember, what I'm looking for is a visible difference in between this and the previous color value that I mixed up. I would say that right now, it's most likely that these two are a little bit too similar to one another. I need to make another change to it. I'm going to take a little bit of this flake white to get the kind of effect that I'm looking for. I think that's a pretty decent variation in between the two. Remember, when you're comparing values and mixtures and trying to make sure you have that value jump in between the two, it's best to always put the color value that you're mixing on top of the color value that you're comparing it to that you need to have that variation from. Otherwise, with distance, our eyes tend to play tricks on us. Next color value. I'm going to start here then with some raw umber little bit of black, probably about 50-50. If I'm looking at the color values up here, they're not really overtly warm, they're pretty cool. So I don't wanna make a color value that winds up contradicting a little bit the uh, color world that is in my image. That's a value jump I can live with. Now remember for these darker color values, I was starting out with my darker pigments. Now that I'm getting into this range of lighter color values, I'm going to start out by actually using my flake white as a base for the mixture. The question is, do I have a good enough jump? Now remember, I've only got one more color value to make six to get all the way up to this. I think this one needs to go just a little bit lighter to sit in the appropriate place. Now previously, I've just been comparing one to the other one that was a little bit darker. Here, I need an equal distance on the value scale in between these two. So let's make that comparison, see what happens. I think we're in a pretty good spot here. When I squint down and I assess these two, I can definitely see the value variation in between the two, and I can definitely see the value variation here also. I think we're in a pretty good spot. Now that I've got this in place, I actually want to stop and double check. Just take a look at my gradation and see, do I feel like all those jumps are doing what they're supposed to do? My gut is telling me that this one is actually a little bit too dark. I see the value jump in between here and here. These two seem a little bit too close together. I'm going to take this one down and I'm going to reassess. So I think that this is going to put us in a pretty good situation where we're ready to actually paint the grisaille that we're going to be working on.